So modularization, we have the first thing that we have in modulation is the include programs. Second one is the subroutines. Third one is the function modules. Function modules. So include programs, subroutines, and function modules. Include programs are global modularization. global modulation uh, technique so what exactly is modulation is uh, writing or developing something writing a logic once and using it multiple number of times so this is a simple concept of modulation you develop something once or write the logic or develop something once and uh, then use it once uh, multiple number of times so develop once use again again and again so as simple as that so in this include programs are one one of the moderation technique and subroutines are you know local to a program local modularization and function models is global global only function model is global these are the moderation techniques that we have Okay, so these are the things that we have global modulation, local modulation, and then we have this uh, function model also. We have this global modulation technique. So we are going to first make use of include programs. So you might have you might have gone through include programs in your uh, previous uh, uh, logic uh, codes that you used to write in C, C plus plus or something like that. So if you if you have that background, you re you can recollect that you you were using include in the hash included the first line so what exactly include is all about is it has some pre declarations which can be used in our program as simple as that so if at all if you want if you have any pre declarations in the include program we can just add that in the top of the program and those all declarations will come into your program so that's something which we have and uh, in abab we have less number of include programs uh, but more number of function modules so function modules are exclusively used so what is function module uh, function what are function modules and how they are being used i'll explain you about that but before that we'll just uh, go ahead with this concept of include programs now
कर Oh, so actually, like we have this. Oh, I was on mute. Sorry. So let me let me do it from the beginning again. See what I said. What I just said is, we we can we can write some logic in the include program, and that logic which we write in the include program can be used in any number n number of programs. So what I just did is I create I maintained this include program here, which can be used by all of us. Like you know, we have um, if we have fifty people. All fifty of us can use uh, this, uh, uh, you know, this include program in our programs. That's what we have. So let me create it as include two, and we need to do this as something like delivery include. Any description of your choice, but here it is mandatory for us to give it as include program here, and just click on save, a local object, and then here we have to write this logic here. Oh, this logic. And once you have activated this as a as in the include program, this can be used in any number of the programs. And once you use it in any program, you don't you don't have to declare all these things. Let me add one more thing: tables, likp, lips. So we have this. So these are the things that we have here. Okay, so. we just need to activate this include program and once we activate this include program uh, this include program can be used in any of our programs so let's create a program and make use of that in that product program okay let me copy the program uh, include name here now we'll go for project We'll go ahead with include include and that program name that include program name. After that, we can directly write the select options. We can start from the select options. The code we can write from the select options in our program. So we'll go ahead with the select options. From select options, we'll write this logic. So we have not maintained the text here and just comment it. Save. So this particular program can be executed and um, execute. So we'll get this data in this. So now we don't have to write the logic here in every program. So whatever is common for uh, multiple programs, uh, which you think that is repeated, you can just uh, add that in the add that logic in the include program, and that include program in turn can be used any number of times in our program. So if you see a standard program. Let's say I go with MK01. This is vendor data. Simple screen. Okay, this is MK0. Now we'll go to system and status. 
this is going to system status you can see the program name here so we'll go for this sap mf0 okay double click on it so if you see this uh, program this is entirely entirely like uh, included in you know, i mean like entire program is in include programs almost all standard programs will be like this uh, entire program will be written in include programs each include program again has some logic so why they do it is mainly because if they they, they, they will be having a plan of using that code in multiple number of uh, you know programs that's the reason we we have this and then we can see in which which all programs this has been used So these are all the programs in which that include program is being used. Okay, so SAP has like got most of the code written in the include programs like this. But we, we don't use much of the standard include programs. We use a lot of standard function models in our customized programs. In customized programs, we don't use much of the standard include programs. Because function models has an option of giving some input and getting the output process and all these things. We can get it in the standard uh, standard, standard uh, uh, function models. So you have subroutines here. Subroutines is a part of uh, uh, modulation technique in which it is local modulation technique. Local means within the program. So in the within the program, what we do here is like we write something called perform. We write something called perform. And I'll give something like uh, SR1. So some SR1. And then, for this form, perform, we need to have a form SR1. This form SR1. End form. At the end of the program. So at the end of the program, we have to have this end form. So form SR1, end form. So between, between the, in between this, you can write some logic here. You can write the logic. So this perform statement can happen any number of times in the program. This perform statement can come any number of times in the program. So how many times in whatever places we are calling this, we are using the perform, this form, whatever logic we have written will be executed here. Okay, so this is what happens. So there, there can be any number of uh, uh, instances where within the program you can call it. And uh, whatever lies logic which you have written here, in the form and form will be displayed here. This is what is the concept of uh, uh, subroutine. Okay, so we'll do a simple logic here. We'll create a simple program in which we use perform and form statement. And then we will see different uh, possibilities of uh, going ahead with the uh, different types of uh, 
forms and we can also pass the parameters so how to pass the parameters and all also we'll see in which uh, I'll just normally write perform something like uh, sr1 and then I'll say then we'll double click on sr1 task subroutine sr1 does not create does not exist do you want to create if you say just yes then we'll say main program in the main program say okay and this is the form that gets created automatically and this is only one time creation only once it gets created and we can call it any number of same times so write calling second time And then we'll say perform perform sr1 okay so sr1 we are calling it second time okay so here we'll say just say right simple logic okay uh, we'll give it as something like i am sr1 subroutine and i'm sr1 subroutine okay so now we just call it calling second time calling first time you can see calling first time calling second time calling third And then calling third time perform a second. Mm -hmm. 
So we are having this like this. So we are getting this uh, coil in first time, second time, and third time. And uh, just activate this. Now let me put slash here. So when you execute this, we are saying this calling first time from from a servant subroutine, calling second time, calling third time, and all this. So this is what we have, and you can just write the skip. Okay, so what we are trying to understand here is that a subroutine is something which can be written once and uh, called multiple number of times, as simple as that. So we have, uh, we can have complex scenarios of subroutines wherein we pass parameters and we have a lot of complex code that can be repeated number of times and number of times in our program. Uh, there can be import parameters, export parameters, and we can be changing parameters and tables that we can pass through this subroutines for which we'll take we'll discuss with the examples of this routines okay so we'll do that the uh, this is a simple modularization example function module simple function module so now what exactly is the significance of function module is it can be it can have parameters a model a function model can have parameters of course if a function a subroutine can also have it but uh, this is a global uh, sub global uh, modularization in which we have we can have import parameters we can have export parameters we can have changing tables that's the internal tables exceptions and uh, source code so these are the six options that we'll have in a modularization technique so we will we will use one simple example of uh, say c is equals to a plus b so we if you want to give get c is equals to a plus b then in this example what would be the import parameters means import in the sense giving it to the system so what are the import parameters that we have here the import parameters would be a a comma b what is the export parameter that we have c and what what will be the source code c is equals to a plus b so this is what we have now c is equals to a plus b for which we have export parameters c uh, import parameters are a comma b so this is what we have so let's go ahead and uh, do it now and in this simple example we are not taking care of the changing exceptions and tables concept so these three we are not taking into consideration now c is equals to a plus b we're just having this import parameters export parameters and we have source code let's do a simple function module for that so for doing this simple function module any function module can be done in 
SC37 transaction. We have to build it in SC37 transaction, which is called function builder. Now, before that, we need to have a function group. Function group. We need to create in create it in the SC80 transaction. We need to create a function group. So this is what we have. So function group is like a is like a package kind of a package kind of a kind of a package for for all the function modules for example you have a function function group if you have a common the common uh, logic then we have to write it in the function group so in the function group we can write the common logic and then we have function model fm1 fm2 so in this function function group we'll go for something like z dxc underscore function group one so this under one function group we can have multiple function modules function module one function module two and all this okay so this is what we have so function group under one function group we can have multiple function modules and this function module uh, if there is a common logic that we have to write for uh, all these function models function model one function model two if there is something which is common which we have to declare we can declare at the function group level and this function group we have to create it at se80 transaction se80 transaction we have to do it in se80 transaction so function module uh, we'll be creating a SC37 transaction. No matter how many uh, function models are there, we'll create in function model. So remember, without function group, you cannot create a function module. Okay, and just like a package is just a name, function group also is just a name. That we have to declare here. This is what we'll do now. Now let's go to fun SE80 first, create a function group and then we have to save it another and we have to create a function model in SC37. And when we go to SC37, we'll create this A and B as the import parameters, C as export parameters and source code will write the C is equals to A plus B. This is what we'll write. And in this, uh, we'll, we'll give all the properties of this as we'll go ahead with uh, the properties of a b and c as some property like data element we'll assign something like we'll assign the property as numc underscore 5 or something in which like this is a predefined data element which will have the length as 5 and type as numeric okay so we'll give it to for a b and c for all the three we'll keep the same properties so what we have to do now we have to first create a package uh, 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 the function group so let me also create a package here because we don't have it here
so we'll right click on this create a function group so in, in fact like you can also create it like this instead of that we can also select here the function group and we can create something like z vikramaditya z b a underscore fib g1 and you can click just click on create so yes g1 So in this we have these things so by default this everything will be there in this so we have to just right click and activate once you have created this you just need to activate this so once it's activated so once it's activated we can go ahead and uh, create a function module so for that we will do it in that will do it in fsc37 we'll create a function module in sc37 so in this we'll go for zjh underscore z vikramaditya underscore something like add simple function more group called add so now it's mandatory for us to give the uh, function group Z, uh, zva underscore fg1 is the function group that we have created so this is sum of two numbers so just say okay so this this uh, this uh, warning will come for sure for everyone nothing to worry this is not a error or something by default it will throw an error that the by default it will show an uh, message that it this function model is reserved so we'll just say okay here we'll go ahead with other import parameters now so as we have discussed in the theoretical part Import parameters a comma b and the export parameters c and for all we'll give it as numc underscore five so here i'll give it as a a type numc underscore five b type numc underscore five then export parameters we have c type numc underscore 5 source code c c is equals to a plus b c is equals to a plus b Now we'll execute this and we'll have the value of a and b so the value of a is something like 12 b is 15 executed and you'll get the value is 27 so as simple as that so what did we just do so we gave this import parameters as uh, a and b and export parameters as c and then source code we have given as c is equals to a plus b that's all we have done nothing else so we need to give some parameters here so that's the reason we are given as numc underscore 5 which is a predefined data element export parameters also we have given this because we have to declare some properties so c is equals to a plus b is what we have given in the source logic and when we execute this you can give 10 and 15 and execute you'll get the value of cs 25 so this is at the function module level and and if you have to call this into a program 
uh, you have to just create a program and call it that simple uh, I, I can do it from sc80 or sc38 uh, if you all guys are comfortable with sc80 uh, you go with sc80 because it's easy for us to see everything in one place so we'll have a package right click on this create program ZXC underscore say ZVA underscore um, function model from add So here, if we have to call that function module, we just need to click on this pattern and we need to add the function module name that we have done here. And the, what is the function module name? ZVA underscore add. So we have to give here ZVA underscore add. So this is how we call a function module. So once we have called a function module, let's go ahead with something like data parameters parameters p underscore a type num c underscore 5 p underscore p type num c underscore 5 so we are giving the values in the parameters and data data declaration should be above the parameters that's how we do the you know declaration so once we have to complete the declaration so i'll give something like k type numc underscore 5. so here we'll write as p underscore a is the input p underscore b is another input and exporting we just uncomment these things and we'll give it as k because k is what we have declared here in the program so we can declare c also we can declare some other field also anything so when we say write sum of two numbers is comma k so once we have this syntax check activate execute if i have 10 and uh, 12 execute and you get sum of two numbers is 22 so you get it so since we have to give some input i have declared it in the parameters if you would have declared that in the data also it would have come but we should have had again given some fixed values here for example, A is equals to something, B is equals to something. We need to assign that values and then we, we would have got only a fixed value. But right now, since we have created the parameters, we can give some values, input values to it and you'll get the output of the this function module. In SAP ABAP, we have a lot of uh, predefined function models with complex logic just like we have done in the previous program we have used um gui underscore download wherein we actually have uh, downloaded the you know uh, downloaded that uh, file right similarly we have a lot of standard function modules but this is a user defined function model that we have here which is actually can be used for our, uh, um, you know, uh, for any of the function models. So there are thousands and thousands of uh, function models. For each purpose, we have a different function model. We just call them, and we can make use of that in our programs. Okay, so is it clear now?
so 19th project would be the menu painter menu paint with menu painter with uh, with the option to download the data into a notepad so this is what we have so we have to create a report to display the bill of material data and you all know that it's MEST table which we have this which we have already used in the program and then enable the customized menu so we all know that we have to create a customized menu in SC 41 transaction and going there we have to enable that options and then we have to also enable it to download the output into a local drive this is what we have to do that can be considered as a 19th project and uh, the 20th project would be based on function modules which will be done uh, in the next session so these are the projects that we have covered